explain why 0 and 1 are neither prime numbers nor composite numbers. And I gave you a clue, wasn't it? I told you to look at the definition of prime numbers and composite numbers. So what do we see? Yes, prime numbers and composite numbers must be greater than 1. So explain why they are neither prime nor composite. Prime. numbers and composite numbers are greater than 1. Okay? Next one, homework. This was under exercise 6. So the next five prime numbers after 30, anybody got that? Part B. What's the next prime number after 30? 31, very good. 37, 41, 43, and 47. Okay, all these numbers, they only have two factors. What are the two factors? One and itself. Nothing else. The 2 isn't a factor, 3 isn't a factor, 4 isn't a factor, 5 isn't a factor, so on and so forth. The factors are only 1 and itself. So let's look at part C. What is the sum of the next two composite numbers after 40? In the first place, we need to know what are the next two composite numbers. So can I have Sheldon again? What is the number, what is the composite number after 40? Sorry? Oh, okay, tell me what's your answer. How much? 36. 86. So he just wrote down the answer, 86. Then, if you do this during your exams, naturally the examiner will be wondering, hmm, does this person know why it is 86? Maybe I should ask the student, hey, why do you choose 86? Okay, now's your chance to explain. Why do you choose 86? Sorry? Add both numbers up. Okay, which are the two numbers? Because I need to know whether you really know, right? I'm not going to tell you whether this answer is right or wrong first, huh? So what are the two numbers you're adding up? Forty-two and forty-four. Okay, so finally we have the complete picture. Forty-two plus forty-four equals to. 86. So now because I'm in class, he's in class, I get to ask him, right? During exams, am I going to bring a paper and ask you, Sheldon, how do you get 86? It happens to be correct. Then can Sheldon come over and tell me, uh, Mr. Wong, I added two numbers. Then Mr. Wong asks, which two numbers? Oh, I added 42 and 44. Then I give you the full marks. That can't happen, right? So during the exams, without the working, I can only assume that... You guess. You guess correctly. But that doesn't give you any marks. Worst case is, what if I think you're cheating? You don't want me to think that you're cheating, isn't it? So you must show me you're working, okay? No working, no marks. Okay, so this is correct. Sheldon got it correct, 86. But please put in your complete working. 42 is the composite number after 40. Because there are, it is not a prime number. There are more than two factors, for example, 1 is a factor, 2 is a factor, 3 is a factor, 6, 7, so on and so forth. So many factors. That's why 42 is a composite number. Now what is a composite number after 42? That will be 44. Because we already identified that 43 is also a prime number. So we add these two numbers up, you get 86. So now, determine whether each of the following is a prime or composite numbers for exercise 7. So part A, prime. We have 23, 47 and 53. Composite will be the rest. 9, 25, 45 and 70. Okay, please do your corrections yourself. Do your self-marking by yourself. Part B, the largest prime number less than 30, that will be 29. 
Can you find a larger prime number that is smaller than 30? You shouldn't be able to, huh? 29 will be the largest. What is the difference between the smallest and largest prime number between 30 and 65? Okay, smallest prime is 31. Largest prime? Yes, very good. Is 61. So, difference equals to 30. Can I just write this? No, I want to see some working, okay? So, the difference will be 61 minus 31 equals to... Uh, 61 minus 31 and you get 30. Okay, so just now over here. Part C, difference. Equals to 61 minus 31, and our answer is 30, okay? Did I give any more homework? Oh, there was one more. Express 1, 2, 5 in prime factors. Now we are on page 6. Okay, so I told you one way, right, which is called Repeated division. So over here, this is the name of the method. So 1, 2, 5, we divide. What do I divide it by? Why not any other number? So why do you choose 5? Ah, okay, so the correct answer will be, it is the, 5 is the smallest prime number that can be divided by uh, 1, 2, 5. Okay, so... I cannot choose 2 because I will get a fraction or a decimal. I cannot choose 3. I cannot choose 4. I will choose 5. So 125 divided by 5, you will get 25. Okay, let's think again. Can I divide by 2 again? 3, 4, no, right? 5. Can I do that? Yes, divide by 5 again. And I get 5. Can I divide again? Yes, one more time. 5. What do I get now? 1. Do I stop? I stop here because I get 1. So now, what are the... Um, what is it that we need to do? We express 125 as 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, do you notice that 225 is expressed as 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 7? They're the same thing. So 1, 2, 5, 125 is equal to 5 times 5 times 5. Very easy, isn't it? Can you imagine if some numbers are very big? Then we are going to have many, many multiplication signs. Maybe there's an easier way to write them down. Huh? We will find out next time, okay? Next method is the factor 3. So how does this work? We take, we write 2, 1, 6 at the top, and we draw a tree. Draw a tree. You think this is it? No, uh, of course it's not like this. This is not mathematics. I am going to draw a tree, a factor 3, which has branches. Trees have branches. Okay, they, they look like this. But now our tree is upside down, okay? It branches downwards. Okay, now, now I need to write down what are the factors of 216. Please don't take up too much space huh, because our tree is going to grow very big, okay? So what is the smallest prime number, the prime factor of 216? Smallest prime factor of 216? Two, yes, very good. So on one side I have two, and on the other side, I will have 216 divided by 2 mental sums, 108. Thank you. Okay, so now let's look at what we have. Is 2 times 108 equals to 216? Yes, our first step is correct. Okay, now I'm going to draw more branches. Should I draw the branch from 2 or 108? Why not 2? Because 2 is already a prime number. If I if I do this, then I'll get 2 and 1. Oh, then when am I going to stop? Right? I can keep going on and on and forever, right? This doesn't make sense. Let's not do this. Okay, so since 2 is already a prime factor, we stop over there. Now, what about 108? I can further divide it, right? Into 2 and... How much is it? 54, yes. Take note that I keep choosing 2. As my because it is the smallest prime factor of 108. Okay, I keep con I keep trying the smallest prime factor first. Only if 2 doesn't work, then I move on to 3. 
If three doesn't work, I move on to? Do I go to four? No, I go to five. If five doesn't work, do I go on to six? No, I go on to seven. I keep trying the prime numbers only. Okay, now, I'm sure some of you will be able to do this. Let's see who can do it faster. Oh, okay, some of you did it faster already. Okay, wait, from here, what happens? Three and nine. Should I divide this three? No point, right? Because you get three and one. It's a prime already. So let's divide this one. Three and three. Okay? Are you sure you want to do three and one? Then when why stop? Huh? See, see, see if, I, if I do this, I get three and one, right? Or oh, the other three, yeah? This three? So three and one? Then do I continue again? No. I just stop at all the prime factors. As long as it's a prime factor, I stop. Any questions? Okay, so let us write down 216 is equals to, what is it equal to now? We will have two times two times two times three times three times three. All the prime factors. So let me write it down over here. Two times two times two times three times three times three. Okay, you can use your calculator and test this out if you want. Check whether it is correct or not. For those who are done, please move on to the factor three for 360. So again, we will start this way. And we start to divide. Okay, draw your branches, draw your trees. What shall we divide it by first? That's right. Two is the smallest prime factor currently. Okay, please do it yourself. Okay, let's see if we can do it faster. Huh? And please tell me if I make any mistake. Right. So I walk around. Everybody should be doing our work. Okay. Then what happens? Uh, put, I have to written down the final step here. So what is three hundred sixty equal to? Where are we going? Alright, so let us continue. 360. Let's move on quickly, yeah? It will be equal to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. Right? 3, 6, 0 equals to 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 5. You see the numbers getting longer, right? Let's see if there will be an easier way next time, huh? Okay, this thing is called over here index notation. This term, you must. You must be familiar because sometimes you will see this term in our exams. Yes. Sorry? You don't have the page. Anybody else doesn't have the page? Oops. Okay, now we are on index notation, page 7. Let's look at this question. Huh? Is it troublesome to write 125 as 5 times 5 times 5? What if it's a bigger number? So that was the question I kept asking you just now. So, to be brief, to make it simple, we can write 125 equals to, what is this over here? 
Have you learned this before in primary school? Five to the power of three, or we call it five cube, right? The cube of five. Okay, then that makes things much easier. Five over here, this is read as five cube. Okay, so fill in the blanks with me. So what about this one? Five and then this little two at the top. It's five squared. What about this one? Five. Do we call it five fourth? Because we have a cube and a square. No, right? We call it five to the power of four. Five to the power of four. So everything else is very easy, isn't it? Okay, let's look at this one. Wow, what, so many of them. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that will be known as five to the power of six. Have we seen something like this before? Where? When we deal with area, right? What are the units of area? What are the units of area? Units of area. You have? So on and so forth, right? Hey, look at all these little two at the top. Do they mean the same thing? Yes. Five square meters. Five square centimeters. Ten square kilometers. Right? They are the same thing. What about this one? Have you seen this type before? Where? Or when? Volume, yes. What about, uh, if you look at your, maybe a water bottle. It may say 100 milliliters, right? Then for water, it is actually the same as, oh, sorry, 1,000 milliliters, the same as 1,000 cubic centimeters, isn't it? Cubic is the same over here, cube. Okay, we have seen all these things before, nothing scary about them. Okay, so generally, A times A times A times blah, 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 A equals to A to the power of N. Can you tell me how many A's are there over here? How many are there? How many? N, they are N. How do I know they are N? Because over here you say it's N already. So they are N times. So if they are 11 times, then it will be A to the power of 11. If, there are, if the number A over there appeared 27 times, then it will be A to the power of 27. Okay? This makes things easier. So that when we do factorization like this, Probably we can simplify it already. Instead of writing it so long, we can shorten it. Okay, and the final one, in conclusion, we can use index notation to represent the prime factorization of a number. Prime factorization, you have learned two ways, repeated division and the factor tree. Okay, both of which will give you the result of the prime factorization and we call it the index notation. Over here, same thing. Okay? So, uh, for example, over here, we have 5 to the power of 2. The number 5, we call it the base. It is at the bottom, we just call it the base. The number 2 at the top, we call it the index. Or sometimes we call it the power. Okay? Depending on the uh, base and the index, you will get different numbers. So now, express the following as a product of prime factors using the index notation. 108, what is this equals to? First, you can choose to use either repeated division, meaning this way, 108, divided by 2, then you get 54, and you continue. Or you can do it using your factor 3. 2, then 54, continue. Whichever one you prefer. Okay? So what will you end up with if you do this? Either of these two. Please try it now. So what do you get? 108 will be equals to?
So over here, whether you did it by repeated division or if you did it by your factor 3, you will get the same answer which is 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. In the past, we would have written out, oh, 100 equals 2, 2 times 2 times 3 times 3 times 3. But now we learned index notation. Let's shorten it. Instead of writing it so many times, you write 2 to the power of to the power of how many times did it appear? Two times. Over here also two times. Whichever method you choose, you will get 2 square times 3 to the power of 3. Okay, 3 appeared 3 times. Okay? So that is the answer for the first one. Let's try 192. So with my repeated division, 192 will be equals to? Oh, but I don't want to write all these things already. I want to do it faster. Okay, let's have somebody else to answer. Huh? Um, can I have Wen Yen? Wen Yen, what is 192 equals to? Excellent. 2 to the power of 6 times 3. Okay, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The number, the factor 2 appeared 6 times. So 2 to the power of 6 times 3. Isn't it much easier than writing 2 times 2 times 2 times. Oh no. So many times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Which is easier? This one or this one? Obviously, the shorter one will be easier. So that is our index notation. Any questions? Okay, then let's move on. Okay, do this yourself. Express the following in index notation. Who needs more time? Please raise your hand. And it is important to ask for more time in class when I ask for it. Okay, everybody needs to practice. Need more time? Anybody? Okay. Meanwhile, the rest while waiting, I want you to remember what this index notation is. Huh? It is the prime factorization of a number. Okay? That was found in page 7. Index notation will show you the prime factorization of the number. So all the numbers that you write down, all the bases should be prime numbers. Let's try part B first. What do we have? 5 to the power of 5 to the power of 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay, 5 to the power of 4 times 
13 to the power of 4 because over here I have 1. How many are there over here? This is actually 13 times 13 times 13, isn't it? Because 13 cubed. So there are a total of 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 of them. So 5 to the power of 4 times 13 to the power of 4. This is for part B. And N. Is this a prime number? Is 5 a prime number? Yes. Is 13 a prime number? Yes. So over here, this will be my answer for part B. Okay. And finally, uh, no, not finally. Let's go on to part C first. What should I write? What is my first prime factor? Two. Two. How many are there? One. Should I write the one over here? No need. Two to the power one is just two. I don't have to write anything. I don't have to write the power if it is one. Okay? Two times, what is the next prime number? Five to the power of four times seven to the power of twelve. Are you sure? Okay, let, let's just check it out. Huh? This is seven times seven times seven. Over here I have 7 times 7 times 7 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9 So how many all together? 12 Okay, very good So instead of doing all this I shorten it to look like this Okay? Now, question Let's do a check Is this a prime number? What about 5? Is it a prime number? Is 7 a prime number? Okay, so it is correct. Okay? And now, let us go on to part A. With what I have demonstrated for B and C, I want you to double check our work for part A. Do you want to make any changes to your answer? No? No changes? Okay, then, did you get this? 7 squared times 9. Did you get this? Everybody, who didn't get this? Only a few didn't get it. Everybody else got this. Uh, 7 squared times 9. Okay, then let's go on to check our answers, okay? Do you remember what I asked when I had all my answers over, all my numbers over here? Do you remember the question I kept asking? Are they prime numbers? Okay, let's look at this. Is this a prime number? Yes, okay, very good. Is this a prime number? Oh. Is 9 a prime number? So what should I do? So is this the correct answer now? Not exactly. Okay, I need to change this 9 to 3 to the power of 2. And now you'll be correct. Okay? Now 3 is a prime number. And don't forget, index notation. Go back to your page 7. What did they say about... Is it page 7? Over here, just at the top. Prime factorization. That is our index notation. So prime factorization, all of them will be prime numbers. Okay? So part A, 7 squared times 3 squared. Question. Can I write it as 7 times 7 times 9 equals to 3 squared times 7 squared? Can I write it like that? Do you see a difference? 7 squared times 3 squared and 3 squared times 7 squared. Is that a difference? No difference. So if you wrote it this way, it is still correct. It is just like 3 times 2 is equals to 2 times 3. They are the same thing. Right? Both equals to 6. So likewise, whether you write it this way or this way, no difference. But we like to, we like to arrange our things neatly. Right? At home, you have a place where you keep your books. You have a place where you keep your toys. We put everything neatly and we try to write the smaller factors the smaller prime fact, uh, basis first. So if you ask me, I prefer to write it this way, 3 squared times 7 squared, because 3 is smaller than 7. Right? If you look at this, I have 2, then 5, then 7. Over here, in part B, I have 5 and then 13. So I like to do it this way. I like to be neat. Do you like to be neat? If you do, then you do it this way. Okay? But this is still, this is also correct. Okay? And I urge that everybody does it this way. Better. 
it will help you in the future also. Find the smallest positive integer. Okay, so I told you that integer, for now you can take it as whole numbers, okay? But this integer, it includes 0, 1, 2, 3, so on and so forth. And we also have negative numbers, negative 1, negative 2, so on and so forth. But in this question, it says positive. Positive numbers. So I don't want all my negative numbers. Is 0 a positive number? Is, is 0 positive? Really? Yeah? What makes a number positive or negative? What are some positive numbers? For example, the number of fingers we have, right? We have 10 fingers. It is a positive number. One finger, it is a positive number. Zero fingers, is it positive? Zero is not positive. Then is it negative? It is also not negative. So zero is a very special number. It is not positive, it is not negative. So when we say find the smallest positive integer, value of n, we are only considering 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so on and so forth. I don't know what is the number, but we do know that, okay, there is a typo over here. This should have been, instead of n, it should have been m. Change it to m. Okay, for which 20m is a multiple of 75. Okay, understand the question? What are the possible values for m now? Could it be 1? Is 1 a positive integer? Yes, it is. But let's let's see if go ahead and copy this on. If m equals to one, then twenty m equals to twenty times one, which is twenty, right? If uh, if m is equal to one. Now is twenty a multiple of seventy five? No, right? So can m be equals to one? Cannot be. Let's try again another number. If m equals to two. Then 20m equals to 20 times 2, which is 40. Is this a multiple of 75? No. I can keep going on and on, right? Let's try to make a smart guess. Um, I want Oswin to tell me a value for m. Any number of m that you think when multiplied to 20 gives you a multiple of 75. Just choose any number. Five. Okay, let's try five, okay? If m equals to five, then 20m equals to 20 times five, and that will be 100. Is that a multiple of 75? No, it is not. So, uh, Mr. Wong got it wrong twice already. Austin got it wrong once. Who else wants to try any other number? Can you imagine if you have this question during our exams? How long are you going to take to figure out the answer, right? Is that an easier way to do it? Definitely. That's what we are here to learn. So we don't do this kind of guess and check anymore. Don't like. Okay? So, what we will do is to list down the, prime, the index notation of 75. Okay, can we list down the index notation for 75 first? 75 is equal to you do it any way you like, okay? Whether it is your repeated division or your prime or your factor three. Did you get this? 75 equals to 3 times 5 squared, right? So that is our value, that's our index notation for 75. And we do something similar for the 20 over here, okay? 20 is equals to 2 squared times 5. Okay, so far?
Okay, now this is the part that I need you to pay very close attention. For this question, 20 multiplied by m. The answer will be a multiple of 75. Okay, so over here, 20 m, right? Is the same as right or wrong? I multiply by m on left side, I multiply by m on the right hand side. So this m can be any number, it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. I don't know what that is yet. And it is my job to find out. Okay? So if 20m is a multiple of 75, wouldn't 20m have a factor? Wouldn't 20m have all these factors as well? Let me say it one more time. If 20m is a multiple of 75, then 20m will have all the factors of 75. All these factors will be found inside 20m. That's the only way for 20m to be a multiple. So let us compare between 20m and 75. What can be found in 75 that is not found in 20m? 3, very good. This 3 over here is not found inside here. So I know that 3, this number 3, must be a factor of 20m. So I will multiply this by 3 over here. Now is 20 equal to 2 squared times 5 times 3? Are they equal? Left hand side, right hand side, are they equal? Not yet. Because I multiply by 3 over here. Then I also must multiply by 3 over here. Now they are equal, right? Okay. Is, is uh, 20 times 3, which is 60, is it a multiple of 75? Not yet. Because not all the factors in 75 are found in 20 times 3 yet. What else is missing? 5. Because over here we have 5 squared which is 5 times 5, whereas in 3 times 20, I only have 2 squared times 5 times 3. 5 only appeared once. I need it to appear how many more times? One more time. So I multiply this by 5. Multiply this by 5. Okay, so far? If you, if you like, you can take your calculator, go and press 5 times 3 times 20. Is it the same as 5 squared times 5 times 3 times 5? You can go and test it out yourself. You will see that they are the same. Okay? So now the question is, are all these factors 3 and 5 squared, are they now found inside here? Are they found here? Yes, they are. 3 is found here. 5 squared is found here and here. Correct? Okay. So now, go and calculate. How much is this? Uh, 5 times 3 times 20. How much do you get? Let me just uh, do a quick working. 5 times 3 times 20 equals to 300, right? You think 300 is a multiple of 75? Uh, you all you're tried it out yourself already, right? How do we show that 300 is a multiple of 75? We do it this way. 300 equals to 75 times how much? Four. Oh, that means that this this three dots means so three hundred is a multiple of seventy five. Okay, this is just my working. I don't need to show this. My working only. My rough working. Okay. Now we are convinced that three hundred is a multiple of seventy five. So then, have you answered the question? What did the question want? Did they ask for the smallest? Uh, multiple of 75, they didn't ask for that. What they asked for was the value of m. So what's the value of m? What's the value of m? 20m, isn't it? Over here I have 20 times, what is this? 20 times 15. So therefore, okay, let me use blue color. So this is my work. This is what I'm going to show. 20 times 15, right? From here. 
20 times 15, 15 times 20 is the same thing. This is equals to 20m. So m equals to 15. Can? And I got 15 from 3 times 5. Any questions? Anybody lost already? It's okay to be lost, huh? Then go back, what do you need to do? Watch the video again, then you will learn it better. Okay, let's move on to exercise 12. 63 is equal to 3 squared times 7. Express it as a product of its prime factors. Oh, it is already expressed as a product of prime factors. Part A, find the smallest positive integer of n, this time they chose n, for which 63n, this is just 63 times n. n could be any number, but it has to be a positive integer, meaning it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so and so forth. I don't know why that, what that is. And this is a multiple of 35. Okay? Let me do, let us do part A together again. Just now we did, just now I showed you how to do the previous question, right? Same thing. Same type of question. So, 63 is equals to 3 square times 7. And now I have 60, uh, no, 35. What is 35 equals to? I need to express as its index notation again. If you do it frequently, eventually you might not even need to use your repeated division. You may not need to use your 3 anymore. You know that it's just 3 times 5, uh, sorry, 3 times 7. Sorry, 5 times 7. Right? These are prime numbers, 5 and 7. Okay? And 63n is a multiple of 35. Which means all of the factors in 35 must be found in 63. One more time. Since 63n is a multiple of 35, that means all the factors of 35 must be found in 63n. Okay, so what is missing now? Ah, 5. Okay, let me use another color. If I multiply this by 5, I need to do so over here as well. Okay, now, uh, all the factors in 35 found inside, inside of my first line now, which one is not found inside? No, no I, I need to check that all these factors, 5 and 7, they are found inside 63n. Are they all found there? They are, right, so I can stop already. Okay, so from here, I can say that 63 times 5 is equal to 65n. Okay, 60, uh, what you, what is, 63, so careless. 63 times 5 is equal to 63n. Okay, please don't be careless, huh? 63n. So this tells me that n will be equal to 5. Okay, you can go and try it out with your calculator. Take 63 times 5. Find out what is that value. Then see whether it is a multiple of 35. Okay, so uh, self check over here. You don't have to show this. 63 times 5, that gives me 315. Then, 315, I can express it as a multiple of 35. Equals to 35 times 9. Therefore, 315 is a multiple of 35. This is just my self-check, no need to show. But at least it convinces you that yes, n could be equal to 5. And in this case, it will be the smallest positive integer. Can? Okay, now part B is your homework. And exercise 13 is also your homework. Same type of question. But now we have 
three prime bases to consider. Okay, exercise 14, also your homework, go home and think about it. Okay, let's take a look at exercise 15 now. Ravi used 385, one centimeter cube. Meaning the cubes are, they all look like this. Over here, we have one cm. The height will be one cm. And over here, one cm. Okay, these are one centimeter cubes. And he used it to make a cuboid. Who knows what a cuboid is? Or who doesn't know what a cuboid is? Who doesn't know? Everybody knows. Okay. If you are shy, a cuboid looks something like this. It could look like this. could look like this. Uh, yeah, any variation. In fact, it could even be a cube. These are all cuboids, okay? All of the sides of the cuboids are greater than one centimeter. Find the dimension of the cuboid. Meaning, if the cuboid, for example, looks like this, they want to know how much this is, how much this is, how much this is. How to find out? What have we been doing all this while in this uh, topic so far? Index notation, isn't it? We learned your repeated division, we learned your factor 3. Let's see what we can do with 385. Can you uh, write down the index notation for 385? So what do you get? 395 is equal to much? 5 times 7 times 11. Any other variation? Anybody got any other answers? Shouldn't be luck. Okay. This is the only possibility, which means for the cuboid, this side must be 5, this must be 7, this must be 11. No other way to do it. Right? No other dimensions already, such that you get 385. Okay, then I have a question again. Huh? Uh, I like to I like to keep asking questions because you need to keep thinking. Can this be the answer? Over here, one cm. Over here, one cm, and here, 385. Oh, why? But one times one times 385, I get 385. Okay, yes, because if you read carefully, all the sides are longer than one centimeter. I cannot. So the dimensions are three, uh, sorry, five cm, seven cm, and eleven cm. Okay, over here, cm, cm, and cm. Okay, any questions? Then this is your. So far, the homework that I've given to you in these notes, you can just write your answers in your notes, okay? But now, if you look at the bottom of the page, we have homework again. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions over here. It is due on Thursday. So you have three days to do it. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Three days should be enough, huh? This should be done on full scale paper. And what else? I still have, I have standards, okay, that I expect of you. You must self-mark 
how do we sell them up? We look at the back of your textbook. The answers are there. Only the final answer is given. So if your answer is correct, put a tick. If your answer is wrong, what must you do? Put a cross. Is that all? Put a cross? Ah, you must, tr you must think again, where did I go wrong? And do your corrections. If you manage to find out where you went wrong, and you do your corrections properly, that means you learn something. That means you're one step closer to getting your A for your tests and exams. But if you get it wrong, and you leave it like that, that means you're not learning yet. Okay, so it's the start of the year, your very first piece of homework to be submitted to Mr. Wong. Please do it properly, huh? Now, uh, one more thing. What must you attend?